Well, in this discussion now, we've probably reached a point where some people are thinking, well, this is just too difficult. I understand what you're saying, but it's too difficult for me to embrace. I cannot accept a God like that. Now, I know probably about, uh, I don't know how many years ago, probably almost 20 years ago, I was also a, a free willer. And uh, some of the first times I, I heard this, and I read the Bible, and I seen that the Bible was saying, it was too difficult for me to accept it. It was almost as if God is this puppet master in the sky, and, and I have nothing to do about it. But not until you begin to accept that God is God and you are not, can you really accept this. Otherwise, you're creating your own kind of God. You're absolutely right. It, it's a false God. Uh, some people may not understand what's being said, mm -hmm. and they may reject it. Uh, and that doesn't mean, it doesn't mean they're not. Uh, it doesn't even mean they're not regenerated. Right. God has a. We we believe God has determined when a person learns a doctrine and when a person comes to believe it. They may not. You know, I remember I was a Southern Baptist at one time, and someone I just barely remember someone was trying to show me what the tulip was, but I wasn't interested at that time. <laughs> right. And it wasn't until later on I was confronted by an old primitive Baptist who made a big deal about that, and he was a funny-looking man, and I think that's what got my attention. <laughs> And uh, and I, I just started thinking about, you know, what was this guy? I was really, you know, and that led to the, the investigation. God in His providence has a time when a person uh, learns any number of doctrines. I don't ever remember rejecting predestination, but it wasn't until that guy got my attention that I ever come to consider it. And I remember thinking, when I understood what he was saying, and uh, he wasn't a very good at speaking or confrontation. I was playing devil's advocate with him. He got frustrated and walked away a little too soon. But I couldn't answer him. And I remember telling my wife, I said, I've never heard this. And I'll tell you what, I, I can't believe no one's ever preached on it. I don't remember, remember hearing anybody preach on this. And when I started looking in the Bible, I started seeing predestination. And I remember asking people, and I, was, I remember I was upset because how can this be everywhere in Scripture? And, and I've never seen this before. And how come no one talks about this? And it was very taboo in the uh, Southern Baptist denomination. You know, it still is in, in the churches I was at. Very taboo. They didn't want to talk about it. Never man told me, whatever you're reading, put it down. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't reading nothing at that time. So, yeah, there's a time for which God will reveal his knowledge to a person. Right, milk and meat in the right season. Mm -hmm. But, um, so... Here we are, we, we laid out the case, the determinism, that God determines things, doesn't just foreknow and, and see ahead of time, but He actually determines and declares things, and uh, has a plan for everybody's life, whether they think it's wonderful or not, there is a plan, and um, so you have any concluding comments you want to add to this? Yeah, that plan, regardless if you're elect or reprobate, you have been determined to glorify God. Here's the difference. The elect have been chosen in Christ for Christ, and they will glorify God in their salvation. The reprobate will glorify God in their damnation. And whatever the reprobate does, it will it will help in the salvation of the elect. That's how God has determined, just like as we saw, and I'm not saying that Joseph's brothers were reprobate, but when they threw him in the hole and sold him off into slavery, God had determined that evil action, but he had determined it for the sole purpose of saving the people by bringing him, by making him governor of Egypt. So he brought it. So although they meant evil, he used it for good. And so that's what we mean. God does uh, determine whatsoever comes to pass for His own glory. So some are determined to glorify God in salvation, others in their damnation. But all are determined to glorify God. And, and one last, one last uh, point. We just like to reiterate Martin Luther's challenge to anybody. You know, you, you may not believe a word of this. But what we ask is this. If you don't believe in de biblical de determinism, absolute predestination, if you believe that the Bible teaches free will, then please, you are obligated to show at least one indicative verse from Scripture which teaches human free will. And if you can't, and no one has ever been able to do so, if you can't, then you don't have a right to teach free will. You can teach it if you don't believe in sola scriptura. But now we're Calvinists, and we believe that your doctrine must be, it must come from Scripture alone, and it must be demonstrated from Scripture alone. And you're going to have to have declarative verses which teach the doctrine. So that's the challenge that we offer anybody who rejects absolute predestination. Amen. 
now, if you would go ahead and give us uh, maybe links to your websites. Well, you can visit uh, my MySpace page, which is myspace.com backslash absolute predestination. Uh, and from there, you can listen to a lot of my lectures, or you can go to YouTube and do a search for uh, the Monte Collier Report, and you'll come across them. Then visit the channel page for a complete list. Uh, if you want to know, my my teachings mirror that of Gordon H. Clark, and if, you, if you're interested in uh, learning more about absolute predestination, you can visit uh, www.trinityfoundation.org. Trinityfoundation.org. They have uh, excellent resources on Calvinism. That's where you know uh, I would I would point anybody if they're if they're really to, to the point teaching on predestination. They don't pull any shots. They really give it out there. And uh, that's, that's pretty much all I have to point you. All right. Well, Monty, it's been an excellent discussion. I appreciate this. And uh, hopefully the listeners will uh, look more into this. I'll make sure I put all the links and even the links to the various terms that we've used tonight. And I uh, encourage them to look into this in more detail and uh, contact you if they have any questions or concerns. All right. We thank God that he determined this to take place. Amen. Thank you. God bless.